Hi and welcome back to the seventh video of my Christmas art journal series. Today I'm going to make a really fun mini journal with this Christmas tree on top, but I'm keeping the supplies to minimal. No stamps or dies are needed. I'm going to create everything from scratch. I will work on a 6x6 paper and uh, this way I will be able to frame it, but later on I can always punch some holes and put it back on my art journal. This is heavy watercolor paper. And again the size is 6x6. Now I'm going to bring in some of my ephemera that I have been collecting throughout the years. I have tons and tons of them from previous years by Tim Holtz, but if you don't have such elements you can always use little squares that you can cut out from Christmas paper pads that I'm sure you all have in your stash. Anything would work for that. You can even use wrapping paper if it has lovely Christmas designs. You can even use napkins or go online, just print out the different ephemera that you can cut out and stick on your background. So let's start creating our background. The fun part about doing this collage technique for your background is that you get rid of that blank area in no time. All you need to do is to get a collection of scrap paper, cut it in pieces and then stick it down. Make sure that you overlap different pieces so that you get some kind of a dimension. And to tell you the truth, it doesn't really matter if you stick things upside down. These are not going to show at the end. It's going to be a background. You won't be able to see what the design is back there. However, you will get the look and feel of the color combo and the style. So I am using my matte medium as a glue. I'm sticking everything down. And if you notice, I do cover up all the pieces. The specific matte medium that I'm using by Ranger is going to give them a lovely satin finish at the end, but of course you can use any type of glue to stick all those pieces down. Now once I covered up everything, I did use my paper trimmer to make sure that I have nice and neat edges to cut off any excess paper. However, you will see later on that I am going to change my mind for the edges, but I'm going to talk you through this process on how my pages evolve as I work on them and why I change my mind from time to time. So here you see I have a lovely background ready to stick a focal point on top. However, it is very busy. Plus you can still see all the images on those little ephemera and I don't want to draw the eye from the focal point. So that's why I'm going to use white paint and you can use gesso for that. I'm just using that fresco finish uh, paint by Paper Archie which is going to give a chalky finish on uh, the project. And I'm working on my jelly plate and that's just because I want to use that as a palette. I find that it makes the perfect palette for a brayer. So with my small brayer, I'm bringing in some of that white paint. I'm starting from the edges towards the center. And since I do have some kind of a dimension by sticking all those pieces one on top of the other, you will see that uh, the edges that are at the top grab the paint more. So now this looks more like a background. It is more uh, faded out. You can't tell what the designs are and uh, they are not going to steal the thunder of the focal point. And of course, since I have all that paint left over there, I'm just going to dilute it with water and add some white splashes. And as I said in the beginning, I'm going to keep the supplies minimal, so no die cutting and no stamping. I'm going to call this background done and I'm going to leave it aside to dry. And let's work on the focal point, which is going to be a lovely tree, really whimsical looking. I'm going to draw it and I'm not going to use any dies or stamps at all. So I'm working on a 6x6 paper so I get a feel of uh, how big I want my tree to be. And I'm going to create a shape that looks like a um, water drop, I would say, because I want my tree to look quite whimsical. I'm going to create the main shape and work it a little bit with my pencil until I'm happy with the outline. I can always erase little lines, draw new ones, it doesn't really matter, this is not going to show at the end, that's why I'm using a pencil. And now to make it look more like a Christmas tree, I'm going to create layers. I am going to separate it in four layers, following the main shape of the tree, but making sure that they look quite chubby to add on to that uh, whimsical look and feel. And of course, if you want to adapt this design for a two-page layout inside the book, you can always create more than one trees that are thinner or fatter, that are taller or smaller, so that you can create kind of a whimsical Christmas tree forest. 
Of course, you can play around with your sketch as much as you like until you are happy with the outcome. And then I'm going to bring in my scissors and cut it out. And in the beginning, I was planning to use this just as a template, but you will see later on how I'm going to change my mind. So I'm going to cut out all the layers individually. If you are planning to make something similar inspired by these whimsical trees, make sure to tag me on Instagram, I would love to see your trees. So here are all my four layers, as you can see I can easily put them back together like a puzzle. And now I'm going to make a note on which side is the top so that I don't make a mess when I try to cut them out from pattern paper. Now I did bring these two pattern papers in red, but you can use any pattern paper that you like. It would work with uh, greens, you can even make a rainbow of colors, you can go really crazy with your uh, Christmas tree, it's up to you what you want to create. You can really get creative and it really depends on what pattern papers you have at home. So now I'm going to use those as a template and I'm going to draw a line around them. And notice at the top I'm going to need a little bit more of a paper. This is going to give me some area to stick the other layer on top, but it's not going to show at all. So after using all the templates to cut out your pattern paper, you will end up having something like that. And when you place one on top of the other, you can put it back like a puzzle and you can even play around with the layers, tilt them a little bit to make it even more whimsical. I think they are super fun. Now this is where I got the idea that I can use the template to draw some snow and use it on my tree. After all, it has the exact same shape and it's going to fit on top of the layers just like a puzzle. Of course, on that white cardstock I do have some sketchy lines, but that was made with a pencil so I can easily erase them. And you can see here I have all the pieces that I need to create my tree, which is going to be my focal point, and I didn't use any die cutting or stamping, I made everything from scratch. I'm using my Mad Medium by Ranger to stick the snow on top of all the layers, and you can see how lovely they fit on top, just like a puzzle. I'm going to use my Mad Medium to cover up everything on these layers and that's just because I want to do a little bit of shading later on. So I don't want the area to be porous. By adding that uh, Mad Medium over it, you are turning it into a non-porous surface which is going to allow for smudging which is perfect for uh, soft shadows. I will repeat the same process for all the layers cover them up completely and then I place them aside to dry and this is really important for the next step, make sure that all that matte medium on top of the layers is completely dry. Now one of my favorite methods to add some shading on cutout pieces is to use my pit big brush markers, however I get a lot of comments that people cannot find the exact same colors that I'm using, they are not discontinued, they are also available in a wide variety of colors, if you look for them with the thinner nib, they do the exact same job and they are also called pit markers, you will find a link below, however in this video I'm going to show you different ways that you can do the shadows with things that you probably have at home. This is a crayon, this is the one by um, Tim Holtz, but you can use something similar that you may have in your stash. Just because this is a non-porous surface, I can easily smudge it and create a shadow just like that. Now the fun part about this is that this is not permanent, which means that if I don't like the shadow, I can easily wipe it off with a baby wipe. And I'm able to do that just because I have matte medium underneath. Another way is to work with distress markers or any other type of watercolor pen. I like the brush tip on these ones better than the crayons because I can easily control exactly where I am adding the shadow. The color that I'm using here is aged mahogany and the trick is to always use a marker that is a couple of shades darker than the actual color on your paper. I like to add the color on where I feel the shadow should be and then I use my finger to smudge it out and fade it out so I end up having a lovely soft shadow. Shadows really make a difference, you can see how more dimensional this layer looks and uh, always remember that you can use a baby wipe as an eraser. I'm going to repeat the same process for the rest of the layers, adding the shadow just on top of the snow smudging it out with my finger 
And don't be afraid to go quite dark, the darker the shadow, the more dimensional your paper will look. And now it's finally time to put my tree together. For that I want to add some dimension, that's why I'm using some foam squares in between the layers. And as I put together the tree on top of my background, I decided that I wanted to have kind of a border to bring everything together with those reds on the tree. That's why I bring in my deckled edge trimmer and I'm going to cut out about one eighth of an inch from each side. So this in the beginning was six by six, but it's going to end up five and three quarters by five and three quarters. And then all I have to do is to glue everything together. I'm going to use my Nouveau Deluxe glue to stick the background on top of a 6x6 dark red cardstock. And then I stack on top the dimensional tree that I created. I think it looks absolutely stunning and I love how it stands out against the background. Now I'm going to add a little bit of shading on the snow and you can go with a light grey or with a beige shadow depending on the look that you are going for. With a light grey I would give a more of a cool tone look, however I decided to go with a warm shadow. That's why I'm using anti-cleaning here. Again following the exact same technique, applying a little bit of color where I feel the shadows should be and smudging them with my finger to make them softer. And now of course it's finally time for my black and white details. Here I'm using a white gel pen and I'm drawing some sketchy lines around the border. And of course I'm going to add white lines around the outline of my tree. This is going to help it pop even more against the background. And I absolutely love the finished result. Now of course since I'm working on paper that has matte medium underneath, this is non-porous and I can always use a baby wipe to wipe off like an eraser any white lines that I have and I don't like. For the background I'm also using my white gel pen and draw some bigger and smaller dots to look as snow. I'm also going to draw a few stars here and there. They're going to look like snowflakes. Just some marking at the background to make it look more interesting. Now I'm going to add some dots of glue all around the tree so that I can stick on top gems that are going to work as little ornaments. You can also stick a little sequins on top to work as ornaments or create your own by cutting little pieces of paper. You can leave your tree like that or draw the ornaments with your white gel pen. Now this is where I decided that I want a star for the top of my tree. I'm going to draw it, although I do have some dies for that, but I did promise at the beginning of the video that I'm not going to do any die cutting or any stamping. Again for the tree I'm going to follow the same technique, so I'm adding a little bit of shadow just like I did with the snow. And then I'm going to bring in a very fine black liner and I'm going to add some sketchy black lines. Now of course this is completely optional, I think it helps all those different cutout elements to pop even more. It is kind of an add-on on the shadows, but uh, it really depends on what you like to do. This is where I cannot stop working on an art journal and I keep on adding more and more details. I always like to add some quotes on my art journal, so this is exactly what I'm going to do with this one. I'm using one of my chipboard quotes. And I love how this is a uh, red lettering on top of white. I think it matches perfectly with my project. So that was the project for today, while trying to keep all the supplies that I used to minimal and sharing different options on the supplies that I actually used. Here are some close-up photos on the project where you can see the details better. I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired. Just like always, you will find the links down below to everything I used. Thank you all so much for spending some time with me today and I'll see you all next time.